Hello, and welcome to episode 14 of Sarastro's Star Wars Legion painting series. In this episode we're going to paint the X-34 Landspeeder expansion from Fantasy Flight Games' Star Wars Legion. The Landspeeder is an impressive miniature with multiple options for weaponry and additional gunners, and is extremely rewarding to paint. You can see that I've aimed to capture the feel of Luke Skywalker's Landspeeder from episode 4, matching the colours, design features and weathering but there's nothing to stop you from varying all of these elements to create your own unique look. Let's take a look at a brief summary of how I've chosen to paint the X-34 Landspeeder. We're going to begin by assembling each of the separate parts before spraying the model with a primer, which will include some optional zenithal highlights, especially for the Rebels. I'm then going to provide the base colours for the Landspeeder. This will include some dry brushing for the areas of metal, followed with the bodywork, which will include some delicate freehand painting for the design elements. The finishing touches for the Landspeeder will focus mostly on providing some heavy weathering, followed with some optional lighting effects for the blasters. Finally I'll be painting the three Rebels. For the two optional crew members I'll be using the same Endor themed colour scheme as detailed in episode 2, which won't need repeating here. I will however be detailing my approach to painting the skin tones and faces, and I'll also be sharing my colour choices for the driver. We can then stick down the separate parts, permanently or otherwise, to complete the Landspeeder. Let's begin. I'm going to begin by assembling the speeder following the included instructions, which do a great job of breaking things down. You can see that I usually favour a superglue that has a brush on applicator, such as this one by Gorilla. I'm gluing all of the parts together except for the windshield, the stand and the engine covers, which may be glued down or left off depending on how battle worn you'd like your speeder to look. I'm also leaving off the weapon mounting plate for now, as well as the blasters themselves. These can be stuck down to a pencil or something similar for priming in a moment. And here I'm doing the same for the engine covers. The driver and optional rebels are also pretty straightforward to assemble, and they too can be mounted to something ready for priming. Once done, I'm now priming all of the separate parts with a black primer. And I'm now providing some zenithal highlights with Vallejo's Cold Grey. If you're just going to prime in a single colour, then grey is the colour I'd recommend. And finally, just for the three Rebels, I'm providing a highlight of pure white sprayed from above. This is of course entirely optional, but will help when painting figures like the Rodian to achieve a nice bright skin tone in a single layer. I've now come to a decision regarding the engine covers, and I've chosen to glue just one side down. With the figures primed and ready, let's now begin adding some colour. I'm going to begin by creating a roughly equal mix of lead belcher and celestra grey, which I'm going to use to dry brush all of the bits of exposed metalwork. This will include areas like the grills, exposed bits of wiring and the engine intakes. I'm doing this messy work now of course, as we don't yet have to worry about hitting the surrounding bodywork. I'm then following this with a neat non-oil wash.
For some areas, you may like to dirty the tone further with the addition of some brown or maybe some typhus corrosion. This can be used neat, or as I'm doing here, by mixing it into some Nuln oil. And I'm now providing one final dry brush with the silver grey mix we made a moment ago. To add a little more visual interest, I've chosen to paint some of the exposed engine cables, and you could really use whatever colours you like for this. And I'm now dirtying things down with some additional shade. And finally, I've chosen to add some rusty brown tones, mostly to the inside of the exposed engine. These bits of weathering could of course be done later on if you prefer. I'm now going to paint the paler sections of bodywork using a 3 to 2 mix of rat skin flesh and Bugman's Glow. Notice that these are both from the base range of Citadel paints, which generally allow us to create pretty solid coverage in a single coat. You can also see that I'm using quite a large size 4 flat brush to help me more quickly cover these larger areas. I'm then switching to my regular brush for the smaller parts. I'm now painting quite a delicate trim that runs beneath the grill. For the darker sections of bodywork, I'm using a 3 to 1 mix of Dryad Bark and Mephiston Red. Along with some water, I'm also adding just a touch of De La Rowney's Flow Enhancer, which I find helps when painting thin lines.
I wouldn't worry about being too neat for the front section, as this will be receiving some heavy weathering later on. I'm happy to leave some grey showing here on the engine intakes as I'll later be stippling on some chipping effects. I'm also using this for the interior of the cockpit except for the seats. I'm now going to paint on the finer graphical elements with the same colour, starting with the thin line that runs around the edge of the bonnet. My approach here is to paint the line as thinly as I can before going over it to even things out where necessary. Naturally, I'll be making a few corrections with the paler tone along the way. For the design on the bonnet, I'm first going to plot my lines out, starting by placing a small dot in the centre. I'm then marking the centre point near the dashboard, and on the nose. We can then place a few dots in between. And we now simply join the dots. The line we draw between each dot may waver slightly, but the overall design should stay true. And just as before, keeping the line as thin as possible means we can go over it a couple of times, both to thicken and even it out.
I'm now painting the trim that runs around the front of the windshield. And I'm now drawing in the two lines that run part way down the sides. Here I'm plotting where the lines will cross on the bonnet. And I'm placing a couple of dots either side. With the markers in place, I'm now going to complete the design. I'm now painting the design on the engine covers. To finish the base colours off, I'm going to use a roughly equal mix of black and steel leech and drab to paint the remaining parts. For the seats, I've thinned the paint down a fair bit to produce a somewhat uneven and worn looking finish. For these dashboard elements, I've gone a little more opaque. With the base colours complete, we're ready to give the Landspeeder some finishing touches. I'm going to begin by adding some black to the Dryad Bark and Mephiston Red base tone we mixed earlier. I've thinned this down a fair bit and included some optional flow enhancer, and I'm using this to darken the main panel lines. Next I've chosen to darken the underside of the engines by mixing the two body panel colours we created earlier. I'm doing this quite quickly and using some feathering with a damp brush to blend the transitions.
I'm now darkening this further with the addition of the dark brown base tone. This doesn't need to be especially neat, as there will be plenty of weathering going on top later. I just wanted to create a rough sense of volume. I'm now using the Ratskin Flesh and Bugman's Glow Base Tone to add some chips and scratches to the areas of dark brown bodywork. Naturally we want the paints to be fairly opaque for this. I'm also using this to add some rough edge definition. I'm now going to mix a grey tone, somewhere in between Mechanica's Standard Grey and Celestra Grey, and use this to add some further paint chips and scratches. For the very heavy weathering at the front, I'm using a piece of sponge to dab this on. This can also be used to add some edge definition. To create some subtle tonal variation, I'm now mixing in some Steel Legion Drab. Touches like this somewhat blur the boundary between weathering and highlight. Next I'm going to create a more metallic mix using Celestra Grey and Lead Belcher. And I'm now stippling this onto the engine intakes. I'm also dabbing some of this onto the front. Next I'm going to create quite a thin mix of black and Steel Legion Drab. I'm using this firstly to add some oily stains to the grill. Typhus corrosion would also be good for this. I'm now thinning this down further and dabbing it onto the bodywork to create some quite subtle staining. And here I'm being a bit less subtle for the engines. I'm now just adding some definition to the engine details. And here I'm adding a build up of grime to these recessed areas. I've also chosen to add some streaking to the bonnet to help create a sense of movement. I'm 
I'm now doing some further grey stippling at the rear. Followed with some of the black and steel legion drab. I'm going to darken the back of the engines quite a bit. I've now chosen to lighten the orange bass tone with a little ivory. And I'm using this firstly to add some definition to the sharp edges at the back. And here I've chosen to provide a rough highlight to the tops of the engines. I'm now lightening the tone with some additional ivory. This is the only place I chose to add highlights as such, due to the cylindrical shape of the engines. To be consistent, I'm now doing the same for the areas of dark brown. In hindsight, this is something you could do prior to adding the weathering, of course. And I'm now adding a few touches of weathering on top. Next I've chosen to apply a very light dry brush of Zandri dust to the most exposed areas. This helps to unify things and creates a slightly dusty appearance. And to finish the weathering off, I'm providing a few last touches of the metallic grey. Before moving on to the blasters, I'm going to first paint the buttons on the inside of the cockpit, and there are a range of colours you could use for this. I've now chosen to dry fit the speeder to the stand to allow me to glue the stand to the base in the correct position. We can then remove the speeder in order to provide some scenery for the base, and you can see how I've chosen to base my army in the earlier episodes. Next I've chosen to weather the windshield by firstly providing a spray of matte varnish using Tester's dull coat. Once dry, I'm now providing a dry brush of Zandri dust. Notice that I'm using vertical movements to create some subtle streaking effects. I'll be sticking this down later. Now, let's paint the guns. To do that, I'm firstly providing a thinned base coat of black mixed with dark sea blue. I've chosen to follow that with a dry brush of Celestra Grey mixed with Zandri Dust. And finally, a coat of Nuln Oil. You could also paint the turret mount in the same way. To add some colour interest, I've chosen to create some fun lighting effects. 
For the ion blaster, I'm using some Caliban Green to colour the plasma coil. I'm now using Vallejo's Lime Green to paint each individual segment. Incidentally, these are the same tones I'll be using for the Rodeon later on. This can be pushed brighter still with the addition of some white. I'm now using a lightish grey to lift the highlights surrounding the coil. And finally, I'm going to thin down some fluorescent green and glaze it over the entire area. This can be applied in more than one layer to increase the intensity to your liking. For the Mark II Medium Blaster, I'm going to create a simple overheated gun barrel effect by firstly brightening up the values towards the tip using a grayscale. I'm doing this just so that the yellow and orange tones I'll be adding in a moment appear nice and bright, so this can be done quite roughly. You can see I've gone all the way up to pure white for the tip. I'm now going to use some fluorescent magenta, orange and yellow to add the hot colours, but you could use any yellow, orange and red tones that you like. I'm starting by applying the yellow, focusing on the tip. And then applying the orange on top. And finally the magenta, which I'm brushing further down the length of the gun. To bring back a bit of inner glow, I'm reapplying some white into some of the grooves towards the tip. And I'm going over this with a yellow orange mix. These effects are, of course, entirely optional. I just felt the model needed a few splashes of more intense colour. With that done, we're now ready to paint the Rebels. The Landspeeder comes with three Rebel figures, one driver and two optional passengers. As mentioned in the introduction, I've chosen to paint the two optional Rebels using the same Endor themed camo scheme introduced back in episode 2, so I won't need to repeat those steps here. I will however detail how I've painted the skin tones on the Rodian and Twi'lek, as well as the colours I've used for the driver. Let's begin with the Rodian. I've chosen to do some wet blending with some fairly extreme tones to quite quickly achieve a vibrant look with plenty of contrast. I'm therefore going to use Caliban Green for the shadows and Vallejo's Lime Green for the highlights. Here I'm placing some Caliban Green in the shadows on the left side of the head. Next I'm blocking in the main area of highlight with the lime green. And I'm now blending the tones with a damp brush, a technique that works especially well over rough textures like this. I'm continuing around the rest of the head in much the same way, occasionally mixing a mid-tone on the palette when necessary, but mostly mixing on the figure itself.
I'm now going to paint the eyes using a mix of black and Nagaroth Knight. And to finish the skin tone off, I'm going to thin some Celia Green Shade with an equal amount of Lamian Medium and brush this into the mid-tones and shadows. This just helps to add a little depth, smooth out the blending, as well as to articulate some of the bumpy texture. With the skin tone complete, I'm now going to add some reflections to the eyes. I'm going to start by adding a couple of lower reflections using the Ratskin Flesh and Bugman's Glow mix we used for the Land Speeder. I'm now lightening the Nagaroth Knight and Black Base Tone with the Vallejo's Sky Blue, although you could use white for this. And I'm adding a fairly soft highlight to the upper half of each eye. Finally, I'm adding a couple of small extreme glints to each eye. This could be done with pure white or a very pale off-white if you like. Moving on to the Twi'lek, I'm going to provide a base skin tone using Vallejo's Flat Blue mixed with a little blue-green. And for the headdress, I'm using Mornfang Brown, darkened with some black. I've chosen to highlight the headdress first by lightening the base tone with some Zandri dust in a few stages. I'm now using Virtually Pure Zandri Dust for my final highlights. Next I'm going to highlight the skin, firstly with the base skin tone but with an increased amount of blue-green, and later with the addition of some sky blue. I'm now further increasing the amount of blue-green. I'm now adding some more blue-green along with some sky blue, although simply adding white would also be okay. I'm 
I'm now adding additional sky blue. This is my brightest highlights tone, which is almost pure sky blue. I'm now using some ivory to dot in the whites of the eyes. For the driver, I've used the same Citadel skin tones as detailed in the previous episodes, but I varied the outfit from the regular troopers to make him stand out, so here's a rundown of the main colours I've used. For the jumpsuit, I've provided a base colour of flat blue mixed with black, which you could follow with a wash of Drakenhof Nightshade if you like. And I've provided a few highlights, firstly by mixing in a little Zandri dust. And now some white. We can be quite sketchy with the legs, as they'll barely be visible anyway. For the brown areas, I used USA Olive Drab for the vest. And, after initially painting it partly in blue, I eventually chose Steel Legion Drab for the hat. I'm now shading all of the brown leather with a roughly 3 to 1 mix of Agrax Earthshade and Nuln Oil. For the highlights on the hat, I've started with a reapplication of the Steel Legion Drab base tone. For the curved front of the hat, I'm going to create a gradient towards the more upturned lower half. Elsewhere, I'm pretty much just dabbing the highlights on with the side of the brush tip. I'm now going to begin pushing the highlights further, firstly with the addition of some Balor Brown. 
you may notice me using a thinner consistency for the larger, flatter areas and a more opaque consistency for the smaller areas of highlight, including the edges. This is now virtually pure Balor Brown, which I like for its somewhat intense yellowness. Finally, I'm going to push things further with the addition of some ivory. For the vest, I'm lightening the USA Olive Drab with some ivory and some rat skin flesh. I'm now painting the lenses of the goggles firstly in black. And here I've chosen to provide a green tint using the Caliban green and lime green tones we used earlier. I've also chosen to paint the rim in grey. And here I've chosen to add a lower reflection using the Ratskin Flesh and Bugman's Glow base tone we used for the Land Speeder. And here I'm just adding a little dark lining beneath the rim. I'm now gluing the driver into place. Along with the weapon mounting plate. I'm now going to spray all of these painted elements with some matte varnish off camera for protection. And I'm now gluing in the windshield. And I'm attaching the land speeder to the base. The blasters can be simply dry fitted in to allow them to be easily swapped out as needed. And I've chosen to stick the optional Rebels down with a little white tack in case I decide not to field them when playing. And this completes the X34 Land Speeder. Thank you for watching. Do please let me know if you've enjoyed the video with a comment and a like and by subscribing to the channel. And as usual, please see the video description for a full product list as well as links to all of the places I can be found on social media. Join me again soon when we'll be travelling to the Clone Wars era as we continue painting miniatures from Star Wars Legion. Happy painting!